So what has taken place over all the different generations? How did all these different things happen? How did people survive? What are we doing wrong? These are all really great questions. And one really has to sit back and go back and look in history to see why you need to be a prepper. And why prepping is so important. Whether you are a total, full-blown out prepper, or maybe you're a prepper that is basically planning ahead in case of an emergency, maybe a job loss, anything that's unforeseen, right? Maybe you don't have a year, a two years worth of food. What has history taught us? Well, if you go back in history and you look at the Great Depression, and then you compare it up to the Great Blizzard of 49 out in Wyoming and everything else, all right, those two huge scenarios had a one thing in common for the reason that so many people survived. And that is, they determined that the people that lived in towns and cities were worse off than the people that lived in the rural areas. You could call them the beginner preppers, where prepping begun. And the reason I say that is, is because the people that lived in the rural areas back then in the Great Blizzard of 49 and in the Great Depression, the one thing that they shared in common was they had food. And why is it that they had food? Because you see, for those people that lived in the rural areas, they couldn't just run into town and buy groceries and things from the store. If they did have to go into town, it was probably once every blue moon just because of the fact it was so far away and people didn't have the means sometimes to get there. Not everybody owned vehicles. Not everybody had a way of transportation. So you have to sit back and think about where are we now? What have we gotten away from that has put us in some of these positions and predicaments that we have been put into. What has technology done over the generations? Some things we can sit back and we have control over. Nowadays, everybody expects that they can go to the store and they buy whatever they need. A lot of people don't have more than, if they're lucky, three or four days worth of food in their house. You have people out there nowadays that go to the store every day just to go home and cook dinner. Whereas in back in the Great Depression and the Great Blizzard of 1949 in Wyoming, the people in the rural areas had food. For one, Back then, people canned a lot of food. That's where the canning really, really took hold, was in that era. Now, I'm sure you all can relate to this in the fact that if you have grandparents, more than likely your grandparents were taught, and they probably did it right up until they couldn't do it anymore, and that was canning. I remember my grandmother's basement. The whole basement was full of canning jars. Full canning jars. But we don't do that anymore. We rely mostly on canned goods, frozen goods. Fresh vegetables are great, whether you go to a farmer's market, whether you grow them yourself. We all like the fresh vegetables. Those are the best. Let's just be point blank. 
But what does it do for any type of long-term food storage? Yes, you need to have seeds, you need to be able to plant your own gardens, to grow your own food, to keep your stockpile going, especially if you are canning. Got it? I haven't started prepping as far as canning yet. It's something that I am seriously considering, but I haven't made that jump yet into the whole canning process. Because it does take a lot of time. You have to prep whatever it is you're going to can. There are certain ways that you have to do things so they don't go bad. You really have to know what you're doing. You have to do your homework when it comes to canning. But if we go back in history, we can see that canning, even during the Great Depression and the Great Blizzard of 1949, saved a lot of people's lives. It was the key factor in the survival mode of those people. They did well better off than the people living in the cities. Because you see the stores either didn't have goods or you were limited to what you could buy. With them having the availability to go downstairs and grab some fresh corn, green beans, any type of vegetables, carrots, potatoes, meat, whatever. Because they canned everything. They had to. They had to can things to get through the long, cold, hard, harsh winters. Because once winter hit, they couldn't get into town. So they were pretty much on their own for weeks and months on end. They wouldn't even make it into town. So the whole moral of this video is where have we come from? And what have we forgot along the way? And what has technology done to making everyone forget how to fend for themselves and not being prepared for even the smallest of storms compared to what took place years ago? We see right now with all these winter storms that are coming through and people are wiping out grocery stores. That is proof that people are not prepared for any longer than a few days. Because if you were, you wouldn't be in that position to have to run to the store every time a little storm rolled into town. You would be just fine. You would not be part of the chaos you would be safe and sound at home with your family with plenty of food to eat and not having to worry about dealing with all the chaos that takes place. It seems like on a daily basis. So ask yourself, what has history taught us? Comment in the section below and tell me what you have learned from your ancestors that maybe you still do. There has to be something, something that you hold dear to your heart in order to your survival and your family's survival. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope everybody learns a little bit from history and how it's changed all of us over the generations. But I don't think it's changes for the best. Yes, there are some good, but I think there's more changes that have taken place that has took us away from where our roots started. Till next time. Everybody stay safe, keep prepping, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.